as many of you know, I have truly loved the Lava 60mm and I've been using it as my primary macro lens for years now. And during the time I owned the Lava 60mm, the Lava 100mm came out. Uh, which is a better lens in terms of image quality because it can focus to infinity on full frame and it doesn't have these issues with dark corners. But for me, that lens was too big, too heavy, too long and too front heavy. So when I was using it for freehand macro photography, it always felt like a burden uh, to manage that lens. So that is why I never bought it. But this year, Lava released a couple of very nice new macro lenses, uh, the Lava 85mm, which is the one I decided to go with in the end, and also the Lava 90mm, which is basically the same size and weight, almost at least, as the Lava 60mm, but with a nicer image quality, with uh, more modern um, build quality, and a better feel, and, and a better design overall. And also that you can use it on a full frame camera and focus to infinity without any vignetting. Uh, as you might know the Lava 60mm is actually made for APS-C cameras. It's more like a lucky coincidence that it works pretty well on full frame cameras. But you still get a bit of vignetting even when doing macro photography. I never saw that as a big problem though, because I like vignettes, I often add them myself. And very often I crop my photos anyway, so it doesn't matter to me that much what is in the corners and if they are a bit dark. Uh, but if I can get a lens without any vignetting at all, of course I'm gonna prefer that. Anyway, now in 2022 it is clear that if you're using a full frame mirrorless camera, the Lava 90mm and the Lava 85mm are the two best lenses that you can get if you're out for a general purpose macro lens. The Lava 60mm still has a place. If you're using a DSLR, it is still one of the best macro lenses you can get for your camera because uh, you cannot use the Lava 90mm or 85mm on a DSLR. Uh, they are simply not made for that, they are only made for mirrorless cameras and that is why they can be so much uh, smaller and lighter. Uh, by the way, if you uh, are a bit confused by all the different lens options offered by Lava, I understand you, that's completely normal. I get a lot of questions about what macro lens to pick depending on what camera you have and so on. And I have a solution to that problem. I have a lens guide that I've made where you answer a few simple questions about your camera and what you're gonna use the lens for. And then I will recommend the lens I would have bought if I were you. So please go check out that out if you're unsure about what macro lens to get. So let's unbox this lens and have a look at uh, how it looks. It's incredible how small it is. It is really incredible. <laughs> this is a full frame two times magnification macro lens. And I'm gonna use it on my new Sony a7 IV camera. I've been shooting with a Sony a7 III for a few years, but now this year I upgraded to the a7 IV, which I'm very happy with. And look at this. Look at how compact and lightweight this is. This will be so nice and I mean it took a lot of uh, thinking back and forth for me. It was not an easy decision if I should buy the 85mm or the 90mm. The 90mm has the advantage that it is uh, a lot faster. It has f2.8 in max aperture. This one can be so small just because it has only 5.6 uh, in max aperture. But when I'm thinking about how I'm using my macro lenses, I almost never use a wider aperture than f5.6. And uh, this lens is so small and lightweight, so it will be a lot easier to photograph uh, freehand outdoors. Also, I'm often traveling with my macro lens. I never go anywhere <laughs> without my camera and macro lens. And then it's so nice to have something small and compact. And uh, beyond that, this lens is a lot narrower uh, than the Lava 90mm and that has a huge value as well. When you're about to photograph something that sits on a surface and you want to get in from the side, 
it is so much uh, better if you have a narrow lens than if you have a thick lens because a thick lens it will be very hard to get in from the side because the lens will push away the surface or the thing you're trying to photograph so that is a big part of why I chose the 85mm and when it comes to image quality I mean I've only used this lens for like a few hours when I did the review when it came out but then I was extremely happy with image quality. I could not see any difference from the excellent Lauva 90mm or 100mm image quality. Um, I heard a couple of people uh, complain that this one has a little bit of a problem with internal reflections. So that in some cases you could possibly have uh, loss of contrast. But I haven't noticed that myself. But I will probably notice if there are any, any such problems. I will probably notice that now in the coming weeks when I'm going to be using this lens a lot. And I will certainly inform you guys if I see some problem with this lens. Uh, but for now it's my, my main macro lens that I'm planning to use. And I'm going to be using it with uh, the Mikey MK320 flash that I've been also using for years. And uh, I love this flash as you know I made a video about it. Because it is small, compact, very powerful and uh, yeah, it just works. And as you can see, this setup is very compact, despite being a full frame macro photography setup. Um, the big question is, what diffuser should I use to, uh, together with this? Um, since this is so, so compact, I don't want to have a huge diffuser and I don't think I will need one. Uh, what I'm thinking about is either I'm going to use a Pope Shield. I've actually ordered one for this lens a few weeks ago. Uh, Pope Shield seems to have delivery times of I don't know like seven eight weeks so uh, it will probably take a while before I get the Pope Shield when I get it I might try that and maybe cut off a bit of the top because I don't need the, the whole Pope Shield uh, this is a Pope Shield made for uh, bigger lenses and as you can see here it yeah it's, <laughs> it is pretty damn high I could easily cut off like half of it and not lose anything in terms of image quality but still have a much more compact setup. So it's either going to be the Pope Shield or I'm going to make a small cute Pringles diffuser. Uh, if I just attach a Pringles tube here and just let it point down here I think actually that will be big enough of a light source and it will be a nice compact diffuser for this setup so that is something I am planning to maybe explore uh, until I get my hands on the Pope Shield. Even though I've gotten this Laowa 85mm now as my primary macro lens, uh, I may actually buy a Laowa 90mm as well. And that is because in some circumstances related to me running a YouTube channel about macro photography, I need a bigger macro lens. Because for example, maybe I am gonna try a diffuser most of the diffusers out there are made only for big macro lenses so I kind of might need to buy the Lava 90mm still just to be able to try different diffusers and other accessories for macro lenses basically. Anyway that was a short update about my primary macro setup for the rest of this year. I'm really uh, happy about how this setup feels in my hand and I'm really eager to go out and try it. This is my latest Patreon bonus video. It is one hour of me critiquing many many photos of my Patreon supporters. Another bonus video is this macro photography adventure to a nature reserve. I create a new Patreon exclusive bonus video every month. And for $5 per month you can get access to this growing archive of videos. And sleep better at night knowing that you ensure the future of this YouTube channel. Sign up now at patreon.com slash Michael Wydell.